Gambia assented to the APRM in January 2018, earlier this year, which is a really great thing and um, I think a milestone in terms of them uh, ensuring that they are keeping to their political commitments when it comes to governance, uh, human rights and rule of law. And I think one of the key uh, recommendations I, I stated was the fact that local ownership is important in the process because uh, despite the fact that we are part of the APRM, a lot of people in the Gambia don't know what the APRM is. Okay, uh, my presentation will uh, give an overview of um, the context in the Gambia and also basically looking at our transitional period from an authoritarian regime to a constitutional democracy and um, how the Gambia can uh, use the APRM in terms of addressing uh, some of the key um, uh, gaps and challenges when it comes to democracy and political governance. Um, but uh, also I'm trying to contextualize it because within the theme that I fall, so I will also highlight some issues around um, security and migration. I think everybody knows this guy. Yes. <laughs> so um, I think everybody in the room knows that um, uh, Jame um, governed, no, rule is actually the right word, ruled the Gambia for over 22 years. Uh, and he vowed to uh, govern Gambia for a billion years. But unfortunately, in 2016, and yesterday marked uh, two years since he was voted out of office. And then we know that he refused to step down, and uh, which resulted to uh, a crisis that was uh, uh, finally addressed peacefully. Happy for everybody. And uh, But I think uh, the, the takeaway from uh, Jame's 22 years of rule is that there was a culture of impunity, poor governance, and he had total control of all the arms of government, including the judiciary and the parliament. <clears throat> um, so uh, for the first time in the history of the Gambia, because Jame left, um, the Afrobarometer was able to do a survey. Uh, that's survey number seven this year. And I just wanted to highlight uh, some of the key things, especially when it comes to the perception of people uh, about how uh, some of the human rights abuses that they suffered on the Jame, but also their family members. And at the top, we have uh, arbitrary arrest or detention without trial. We also have the issue about torture, rape, or other brutalities by agents of the state. We we also had state-sponsored uh, mother and other human rights abuses that Gambians uh, actually um, experience on the Jame as well as their family members. Um, so currently, well, the new uh, the opposition coalition that won the 2016 elections um, uh, illustrate that we are in a transition period. So we're transi uh, transitioning from uh, an authoritarian regime to a constitutional democracy. And as a result, they have actually made major strides uh, when it comes to concretizing their uh, political commitment to the country. I, I just highlighted some few things that are currently ongoing or has, on, has happened. Uh, one of the uh, key things that Jamet did was to uh, amend the Electoral Act in terms of uh, shrinking the political space, um, increasing the amount of money that uh, opposition parties or political uh, politicians can actually deposit uh, when it comes to participating in the elections. And as a result, um, in um, on 28 uh, February 2017, the new government had an electoral reform, uh, uh, electoral reform, an amendment to the Electoral um, Act in terms of encouraging a more widespread participation. And I think almost everybody is aware when Jame was leaving, he virtually left with all of our money. So um, there is currently a commission of inquiry into the financial activities of public bodies, enterprises, and offices as regards their dealings with the former president. Um, it's currently ongoing, and their mandate has actually been extended to January of 2019. Um, with the transitional justice process, uh, one of the key things that actually happened is the enactment of the Truth, uh, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission, the TRRC Act, which resulted to the establishment of the TRRC Commission, which the members have actually been sworn in and are supposed to sit in soon. Um, the TRRC is supposed to establish historical account of the nature causes that extends of violations of human rights um, from 1994, when Jame uh, did the coup d'etat on July 22nd to January 2017. 
Um, also, um, I think one of the key things that Jame did on, uh, during his 22 years of rule was that there was so much amendment to the Constitution, which calls into question the legitimacy of the Constitution. And as a result, uh, through the transitional justice period, we are actually having a constitutional review process in which we ultimately think we'll have a new constitution that adheres to uh, the principles of good governance, human rights, and so forth. And um, I think this is really nice, the fact that the Gambia in November 2018 also deposited the declaration required on the Article 34.6 of the protocol to allow NGOs and individual access to the African court directly. I, um, but despite all of these uh, great strides that the current government is actually undergoing and doing, there are also key challenges in terms of addressing past human rights violations, but also prevention of future ones as well with the human rights violations. And I think one of the key problems right now in the Gambia is the fact that there is in existence a variety of laws and institutions that um, actually uh, provides the condition in which human rights violations can actually happen. Because when you look at the media laws, for example, all the repressive media laws that were enacted on the Jame are still in existence, and as a result, they are ad adhere to and, and so forth. So there is also about the issue about tampering with the Constitution, because the new government has also amended the Constitution several times, sort of in their favor. So it's, it's also very much important that it's, uh, that um, the new constitution also puts in place uh, clear mechanisms that uh, prevents new governments and people in power from amending the constitution according to their own uh, specifications. And there are other issues as well about manipulation of the security forces and, and so forth. I just wanted to highlight that as part of the um, Afrobarometer survey, um, so we all know that when, when Jame refused to leave, uh, there was an ECOWAS military intervention in the Gambia called ECOMIC, who have been there even after uh, the crisis because the Gambia uh, requested that we needed the support. So one of the key questions that was asked during the Afrobarometer is whether um, the, Eco the ECOMIC should leave uh, for the Gambia Armed Forces and the police to take charge of security matters. And if you look at the data, um, the country is is split in terms of what they think. But I think overall as well, I think with the security sector reform that is currently ongoing as well in the Gambia, I think one of the key questions that we need to ask is whether we even need an army considering our resources and considering our geopolitical, uh, uh, our, our geographical locations and, and so forth. So that's also one of the key issues that is part of the debate within the uh, security sector reform. Um, this just highlights that uh, like 40% of people, especially when it comes to about feeling unsafe, 40% had something stolen from their house in the past one year. One year. Others fear that crime in their homes, others uh, also physically attack and, and so forth. Um, in terms of um, immigration, uh, the IOM uh, stated that the Gambia is one of the three top exporters of migrants to Europe. And one of the key issues, especially within the latter years of Jame, was that a lot of people actually left the Gambia uh, through the back way. And unfortunately, we had a lot of Gambians actually dying on the back way. And this is because of the repressive environment at that time, but also the economic hardship because um, of, of Jame's repressive actions and so forth. Um, so the Afrobarometer also highlighted that a majority of Gambians, about 63%, say that it's difficult for people in West Africa to cross international borders to work or trade in other countries. And I think I just wanted to highlight this because I, I do think it's fitting, especially within um, the discussion today. And about eight in 10 Gambians say irregular migration has decreased over the past year. That's when JAMA left. But uh, rural urban migration has uh, also increased as well. And other Gambians have lived in other countries for more than three months during the past three years. I guess I fall within this category. Um, so moving the government, um, governance agenda forward in the Gambia in terms of using the institutional framework of the APRM. So the Gambia actually decided to join the APRM on 28 January 2018, which was a great move. But I think uh, this also especially within uh, the analysis of other countries that have actually gone on the review with the APRM is the fact that, is the fact about local ownership. 
Because even with Gambia ascending to the APRM, majority of Gambians do not even know what the APRM is. So whilst the Gambia is, is thinking about undergoing or is going to undergo the APRM process, I think local ownership is important in terms of ensuring the civil society, in terms of ensuring that citizens are, know the process but also are able to participate adequately in the process as well. And I do think that um, the APRM does offer the Gambian opportunity, especially looking at the specific country governance and development uh, challenges as well as how we can come up with local approaches to uh, problem solving. And just some concluding, concluding uh, reflections. Um, uh, I think one of the issues is about the Constitution, and I spoke about it a little bit, is the fact that the supremacy of the Constitution and the rule of law should form the hallmark of the Gambia's constitutional um, democracy. And this is important, especially within the context of the constitutional review process in ensuring that the, the Constitution has provisions that prevents government or people in power to change the Constitution according to their own benefit or according to their own self-interest. But, but also importantly as well, is in terms of building the culture of human rights. In terms of building the culture of human rights, and uh, a step has uh, gone away in terms of the fact that the National Human Rights Act was, uh, was enacted, but a commission is yet to be established. So this is one of the key things that will be useful as well. And um, I think the other issue is about institutionalizing the separation of powers between the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary, but also in terms of ensuring that uh, the government processes in partnership with civil society organizations and, um, and, and the government people generally. And I just wanted to conclude with this picture. As I said, yesterday marked two years um, since we were able to kick Jami out of the country. And uh, I think making change happen uh, depends on the critical mass of support. And I think especially with the two-year anniversary for us as Gambians, I think shows that uh, people people were the main reason why Jame, we were able to kick Jame out. And in terms of ensuring human rights, in terms of ensuring that the new government adheres to its political commitment, it's also the people that should serve as uh, the watchdogs. But I also believe that the Gambia can also serve as an example, as a blueprint to other countries, other countries in the continent, in terms of how they can entrench human rights and entrench uh, uh, governance in their countries. Thank you. I'm Satang Nabane. I'm uh, from the Gambia. I'm currently uh, pursuing my PhD in law, LLT. I, co uh, I created an online uh, legal resources and knowledge platform called Law Hub Gambia. And the idea is that we ensure access to information because especially within the, within the context of the Gambia where we are transitioning from an authoritarian regime to a constitutional democracy, one of the key problems we had in the previous regime is access to legal resources, access to laws and so forth. So what Law Hub Gambia decided to do is provide that platform where people can have access to information because with access to information is power, we can then keep government accountable and transparent. My presentation focused on how the APRM can be used as a tool for democracy and political governance in the Gambia. One of the key uh, recommendations I, I stated was the fact that local ownership is important in the process. So I think as civil society, if we're knowledgeable, and as academics, if we're knowledgeable about the APRM process, then we can push government in terms of ensuring that they keep to their political commitment in terms of uh, human rights and rule of law. I think the issue about transparency and knowledge production and sharing I think is important, especially in terms of promotion of good governance in Africa. As I said, one of the key problems we used to have in Gambia is access to information, whether it has to do with the law, whether it has to do with government policies and actions. And as a result, if uh, citizens are supposed to ensure that uh, they hold government accountable, that they are watchdogs, then uh, transparency and knowledge production and sharing, especially in terms of evidence-based good practices of what good governance is and how it worked in other countries can be a useful tool in terms of the promotion of good governance in Africa.
Well, I mean, it's knowledge production. I think knowledge production is one of the key things. But I also, as an imagine scholar and academic, I think I'm, I'm quite happy that I'm, I'm here. And then I have also seen other younger people um, in the room as well. I think harnessing the demographic dividend of, of Africa is perhaps the way to go, especially in terms of, I'm not saying, you know, the older people need to retire. I'm not saying that. But I do think it also provides us the opportunity to ensure that upcoming academics and practitioners in, in governance issues are also equipped and have their skills enhanced in terms of their own contribution towards uh, the promotion of good governance in Africa. So I think kind of seeing the uh, demographic dividend in Africa might be a way forward in terms of the promotion of good governance.